Tonight on the program, has Thailand's happiness deteriorated, and what do economists think about this? We then explore the vegetarian festival in Phuket. It's been wonderful, of course, to, to have this uh, opportunity to come to Thailand. An exclusive interview with the Finnish ambassador to Thailand and Cambodia, and a curve model who's here to break the Thai beauty standards. สวัสดีค่ะ I'm Nat Bunag and welcome to this week with Thai PBS World. We'll begin tonight with a question for you, which is, are you happy or not? It may sound like a very simple question, but seriously, are you happy with your life? Are you happy with yourself, your job, or anything that you do? If your answer is no, maybe you're not alone because there have been a few surveys that prove that Thailand is not so happy at the moment, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, which has led to an economic recession. One of the surveys is the World Happiness Report 2021. According to this report, Thailand is ranked at 48. Although it doesn't sound like a very bad ranking, but it's not quite great to be honest because if we go back three years ago thailand used to be ranked at 44 so that indicates that thailand's happiness has deteriorated and if we look at the top 10 happiest countries around the world of course finland is at the top followed by iceland denmark switzerland netherlands and other countries in europe except for new zealand which is at number nine and the report has been based on the levels of GDP, life expectancy, generosity, social support, freedom, and corruption income. As to why Finland remains at the top of the list, AFP reported that it is because of its public services, where people have equal access to these services, including low levels of crime and inequality, as well as the high levels of trust in authority. Whereas countries at the bottom of the list, which was of course Afghanistan and Rwanda, there are mainly underdeveloped countries where they still face political and armed conflicts. Another survey that proves that Thailand's happiness has decreased significantly is this survey conducted by the Thai Chamber of Commerce and that was conducted back in May which proved that Thailand's happiness index has decreased to 27.7 and that is pretty much the lowest of all time since the survey was conducted back in 2006. This indicates that people's happiness have really decreased as they felt the uncertainties in terms of living, especially with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which has been taking its toll on the Thai economy and people are at risk of losing their jobs and are finding more difficulties in earning income when the daily expenses remain very high. And because of the current economic situation where people are highly concerned about their income, people have have no other choice apart from saving as much money as they can. And this also reflected on the survey where people are discouraged to buy large assets such as a new house, a new car, or even to spend their money traveling compared to previous months where the pandemic wasn't that severe. And we have to admit that many people are struggling to make ends meet during the COVID-19 pandemic, which has led to an economic recession. And people can feel that this situation right now has highlighted the inequality issues in Thailand. Let's find out more in this report by Kuntala Lak Wanpin. Before the pandemic, economists were already saying Thailand's economy was not doing so well. The pandemic has since sent Thailand and the global economy into a downfall. It is also widening the inequality gap. To provide a clear picture of what would otherwise be a face story, we talked to some people who are feeling the economic crunch and listened to their stories. Vegetable vendor in Bangkok's La Prao district, Chandra Namsari, told Thai PBS World that business has been slow this year. When the pandemic started, she could make some sales due to stockpiling and panic buying. But now, as the stagnation has dragged on for so long, people just do not have any more purchasing power. Oh, 
ควิดรุ่นแรกนะมันก็พอได้ได้มั่งพอรุ่นสองไปเลยไม่เหลือเลยพวกกระเป๋าแห้ง Though the country is speeding up its vaccination plan, the situation seems to have been aggravated for Zanro due to other factors. Vegetable prices have risen because of the floods and the vegetarian festival. At the same time, the number of customers has fallen significantly since they have left the city due to the loss of jobs. Despite everything, the vendor told Thai PBS World she would still keep her vegetable stall and not quit, like many other businesses which have shut down because of the pandemic. Being in her 70s and more than 50 years in business, Jan Ron said she's saving up for her retirement. <laughs> Some other people, however, have decided to adjust to the economic downturn and switch occupations like Tanaya Grajono, also known as Guy Fon, who worked as a tour guide in the resort town of Pattaya for 10 years before becoming a real estate sales representative due to the lack of foreign tourists. Her company gave a heads up early when the pandemic hit last year and all the bookings were cancelled. Fortunately, a family member led phone into car sales. Her soft skills picked up from the tourism profession could be put to good use there. The economic recession was, however, also being felt in automobile sales too, forcing phone to change her path again after just 10 months. These are just two examples of millions of people struggling through this economy. We can only hope that after the national vaccination drive and the border reopening, more steps will be taken to restore the economy so people can get back on their feet once again. Shalalak Jan reporting for Thai PBS World. And with the economic impact on people's lives during the COVID-19 pandemic, the big question is whether the government has done enough to ease the hardship and all of these struggles. Recently, Kun Tiu Lip Nak Sum Pop Lao had a chance to talk to a very famous economist on this issue. Yes, Kun Nas, so we question whether what the government has done was enough to help alleviate the hardship and soften the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. So we talked to the economist, Dr. Somchai Pakapariwat, and he said what government has done has actually helped. And if the government didn't do any of those stimulus measures, he said that last year's economy would be even worse. I have to admit that in one part, if you look at the GDP, I think that in the two or three parts, there is a part that can help you not to be able to do more than 1% of the GDP. But there is a part that can help you not to be able to do more than 1% of the GDP. มันไม่จะเพียงแค่นี้เองแต่การบรรเทาในความเดือดร้อนเนี่ยมันอีกส่วนหนึ่งช่วยกระตุ้นด้วยคนละครึ่งไม่กล่าวว่าการเพราะ
and be serious about the inequality gap. กับอีกตัวหนึ่งที่เป็นปัญหาคลากาสังนานแล้วช่วงโควิดเนี่ยมัน expose บอกเลยว่าเฮ้ยมันต้องแก้นะความแตกต่างระหว่างเหลือกับจนผมคิดว่ารัฐบาลจะต้องเอาจริงเอาจังกับตรงนี้ในส่วนหนึ่งก็คือถ้าเราไม่แก้ตรงนี้นี่ครัวเรือนลงทุนธุรกิจขึ้นมา 90% สูงสุดในอาเซียนอันดับ2ของเอเชียแปซิฟิกดรสมชัย said that the issues of household debt has been accumulating for a really long time and the government cannot let this become the tipping point So in the end, Thailand need to invest more in human resources, and we have to be really serious about reducing the inequality gap between the rich and the poor. Back to you, Kunet. All right, thank you. And that's Kun t i l i p n a s u m p o p l a s interview with Dr. Somchai p a k a p a v i w a t And now let's move on to something lighter. This time round, we're going to talk about the vegetarian festival in Phuket. And in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, many of the activities were cancelled to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Let's find out more in this report by Kun Kitipat c h i s u k j i t The annual vegetarian festival is one of the most auspicious events in Thailand, especially in Bangkok and Phuket. And it happens during the ninth lunar month and runs for nine days. The festival celebrates the Chinese community's belief that abstinence from consuming meat and various other stimulants will help them obtain good health and peace of mind. The vegetarian festival in Phuket, however, is a bit different from that in Bangkok, as there are a lot of extreme celebrations. การกินเจบ้านเราเรียกว่าเจียชายหรือภาษาภูเก็ตเราเรียกกินผักอ่าประเพณีเป็นประเพณีแล้วนะตอนนี้เราได้รับการขึ้นทะเบียนเป็นมรดกภูมิปัญญาทางวัฒนธรรมประจำจังหวัดภูเก็ตและเป็นมรดกชาติซึ่งการกินผักของจังหวัดภูเก็ตเราเนี้ยมีความแตกต่างจากทางกรุงเทพในส่วนพระกลางหรือภาคอื่นก็โดยเฉพาะในพิธีกรรมเพราะการกติการกินผักของเราเนี้ยมันมาจากการผสมผสานระหว่างลัทธิเต๋าแล้วก็ศาสนาพุทธศาสนาพุทธมหายานแต่ก็มาผสมผสานกันรวมกันเป็นผ้าหูจึงของเราก็เลยมีการประทับทรงมีการประกอบพิธีกรรมทางเต๋าเยอะแต่ทางกรุงเทพจะไปเน้นของการสวดมนต์ The celebration of the festival in Phuket is usually lively with parades and spectators coming from elsewhere but COVID-19 changed everything All activities have become more restrained k a t u Shrine is one of the oldest Chinese shrines on Phuket It's believed by many to be the birthplace of the Phuket Vegetarian Festival nearly two centuries ago. This place used to allow everyone to participate freely, but today the ceremony in the shrine area must be held under disease control measures. ทุกหลานเจ้าจะเน้นของการประกอบพิธีกรรมภายในเพราะภายในคืออะไรคือการประกอบพิธีกรรมเฉพาะบุคลากรเจ้าหน้าที่ที่มีหน้าที่เกี่ยวข้องเท่านั้นประชาชนจะไม่ค่อยมีสิทธิ์ได้เข้ามามีส่วนร่วมนะจึงเห็นที่อยู่นี่คือจะมีจะเป็นเจ้าหน้าที่ที่มีบัตรทุกคนจะมีบัตรก็คือเป็นเจ้าหน้าที่ที่เกี่ยวข้องที่อยากเข้ามาแล้วก็ประชาชนจะเข้ามาได้ก็คือเข้ามาไหว้พระไหว้เสร็จคนที่จะเข้ามาไหว้พระก็คือจะต้องได้รับวัคซีนอย่างน้อยสองเข็ม To take part here, staff must be fully vaccinated. Mediums must take a swab test daily. While the staff who work in the shrine must take one every three days, and the staff who work outside the shrine must take the test every five days, these measures are more intensive than those required by the Phuket Public Health Department. But it is what the shrine thinks is best for everyone's safety. Kitty p a t e n s u k i t reporting for Thai PBS World. And we have to admit that the vegetarian festival is one of the highlights that many people were waiting for. But because of the pandemic, many of the activities were restrained for the safety of the public. And now let's have a look at the top stories in our weekly roundup. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha announced in a televised address on Monday that Thailand will begin the next phase of reopening on November 1st, with fully vaccinated and COVID-negative arrivals from 10 countries allowed entry without quarantine. Among the 10 are the UK, the US, Germany, China, and Singapore. The full list is not yet revealed. 
the CCSA has also eased some of the COVID-19 restrictions, including shortening the curfew period by two hours to 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., effective tomorrow, Saturday. Some venues such as convenience stores, fresh markets, flea markets, cinemas, restaurants, theaters, sports stadia, public parks and shopping malls can open up until 10 p.m. The World Health Organization, or WHO, has approved Syme Bioscience, a Thai company, as a qualified production site for AstraZeneca vaccine and added the company to its emergency use listing. Owned by a subsidiary of the Crown Property Bureau, Syme Bioscience has been supplying millions of AstraZeneca doses to Thailand and several countries in Asia-Pacific. Former student leaders, politicians of both government and opposition camps, relatives of those who died, Christian, Islamic and Buddhist clerics and representatives of pro-democracy groups gathered in Bangkok on Thursday to commemorate the student-led uprising on October 14, 1973, aimed at toppling the Tanam Prapat Narong military dictatorship. And now it's time for our weekly columns where we explore inside stories as well as exclusive interviews. We'll begin with what you've been waiting for, which is the ambassador, where Kun Hatai Teshiki Tiranan had a chance to interview with the Finnish ambassador to Thailand and Cambodia on his life here during the pandemic, as well as bilateral corporations in education, as well as other things. Having arrived in Thailand with his wife last year, Ambassador Yuri Aviahu has only known the country during the COVID-19 pandemic and is looking forward to traveling more when the situation improves, both in Thailand and Cambodia, his other country of responsibility. It's been wonderful, of course, to, to have this uh, opportunity to come to Thailand. But of course, uh, the COVID has been uh, restricting our, our, our uh, activities quite a, quite a lot on the way. Uh, starting from the beginning, of course, when uh, I came here, I came to, of course, ASQ Hotel. And, and uh, within now, first year, I've been three times in ASQ already. So uh, that's uh, restricting the movements, uh, of course. I've been a little bit here and there, but I look very much forward to uh, visiting many, many other places uh, that I haven't been able to, uh, able to go. Among his favorite Thai food is chicken with cashew nuts, and like many other diplomats here, he's learning the Thai language. Thai food is, is excellent. There's so much variety. I've just started, basically, so uh, I, I'm looking uh, forward to, to uh, learn a bit more. It, it is difficult language for me, it is because of the intonations and, and, and totally different wordings and uh, different ways of expressing things. In terms of bilateral relations, an MOU with the Thai government was signed at the end of September on circular economic cooperation. Uh, that will be a very, very important uh, milestone in, in, in the cooperation. We will start Im immediately looking into how to implement different, uh, different issues behind the circular economy. Finland has earned a global reputation for its excellent education system, so another key area of cooperation is education, especially at primary and secondary levels. We have started with a kind of a pilot project on, on a teacher education training. Three universities in Finland have produced material, online material for teachers in Thailand. So uh, that's, that's our starting point. We are, of course, looking into many, many other fields in the education sector as well, starting from school management uh, and, and uh, issues uh, on vocational training. We have already in, in Bangkok uh, established two uh, kind of Finnish uh, system uh, schools. Uh, one is called Arki. It's a, it's a kind of after-school activity for children and kids uh, about architecture uh, and, and uh, creativity. And uh, the other one uh, is called Hay Schools, just started in September. And it's about preschool education, using the best practices from Finland, basically. One new thing we have this year uh, that we started doing uh, is, is uh, looking into student and labor movements between our countries. We are looking different options, how to uh, possibly uh, uh, help students uh, from Thailand to go to Finland to study, uh, and maybe later on to work in Finland uh, in different sectors. Now, there are just 1,000 to 2,000 Finns left in Thailand. There used to be up to 150,000 tourists from Finland pre-COVID. There are about 10,000 Thais living in Finland. 
I'm uh, a bit surprised actually that, that uh, the uh, relations are quite close between the people and uh, even though we live quite far away from each other but still there are some similar Finns are maybe a little bit uh, reserved in one way or another but they usually get along so well with Thai people uh, Thai people are always uh, smiley and, and, and very approachable Apart from the beautiful natural landscape, especially in Lapland, and vibrant artistic culture, the ambassador would like to highlight how Finland is at the forefront of the anti-climate change efforts. We were the first country to establish a circular economy strategy uh, in, in Finland already in 2016. Since then, we have been looking into different ways how to circulate in the economy, how to circulate waste, how to uh, reduce emissions uh, uh, from, uh, from the industry and uh, agriculture, food production and traffic and so forth. With ties in Finland working mainly in the health and hospitality industries, the ambassador would like to invite more ties to visit or stay in the country for study, work or travel. There are many uh, sectors uh, in Finland that uh, could be interesting for Thai people. And of course, uh, for touristic reasons, there, there are many, many things to see in Finland. Helsinki has so much art uh, around uh, the, the, the sea surrounding the capital. And there are medieval castles here and there. Hatai De Shikitiranan reporting for Thai PBS World. And now it's time for Empowering Thai Women, where we connect you to amazing women who are successful, inspiring, and influential in their own ways. We had a chance to interview Anjali Scott Chemis, a Thai Australian curve model who is here to break the Thai beauty standards with her online social movement, Real Size Beauty. Anchely Scott Cummins, my nickname is Anne, and I'm 22 years old. I graduated from the University of Sydney when about. Real Size Beauty is about you celebrating your individuality, your aspects of diversity, and your unique qualities that you have within you. It's about being proud of who you are and where you've come from, and it's not limited to shapes and sizes. Meet Anchely Scott Chemis, a Thai Australian model who is here to challenge the Thai beauty standards with her online social movement, Real Size Beauty, to empower women to fully embrace their real bodies. The movement came from her own experience of being body shamed and being asked to lose weight at a very young age. Another part was when she was a sports team captain where she talked to young students who felt insecure about their bodies. You feel a sense of moral responsibility and a social responsibility to stand up for them and do what's right and to be a representation for the younger kids who look into television shows, magazines, modeling shoots, whatever it may be, and not see themselves there. So you want to pave the way and continue paving the way for these young, our younger generations, who will be our future. The term plus size, commonly used to categorize clothing and women, has always been problematic. Anchely is among many top models who are not in favor of the term, as she feels that it often leads to discrimination. Being labeled as a plus size model by others, including some Thai media outlets, also upset her in the beginning. So the word that we tend to associate ourselves with more is curve model. No one really wants to be called plus size. We all have our own curves and parts of our bodies that don't fit the norm. So I think we should just be called models. If that's our occupation, you don't need to add the curve or the plus or the sample size. I think it just it causes too much segregation and divide when it doesn't have to. Anchely believes that body shaming still exists in society as there is not enough representation of other body types in the media, especially on social media. Therefore, she thinks it is a social responsibility to let people see other aspects beyond the beauty standards and to treat people with respect regardless of the differences. 
I recently read an article in the Times Magazine talking about how young teenage girls are going through more mental disorders than ever because of Instagram, because they're seeing photos that are not realistic examples of the real world. They talked about them being suicidal and it's becoming a real social issue. So we can't, we cannot turn a blind eye on this. We just can't. With her goal to set an example for other women and to challenge the norm, Anjali intends to express her standpoint at this year's Miss Universe Thailand competition. I will show up and be absolutely confident in who I am and fight extremely hard and hopefully win. And I think winning, I think that's the changing point. I would say I'm proud of us for standing up for ourselves and raising our voices a lot more. I'm proud to see and be a part of a community that's really provoked change and uncomfortable change. I would say keep doing it and keep fighting because there is nothing more empowering than seeing a woman in charge, a woman leader, really giving the men a run for their money. Basically, all body types are beautiful, so let's embrace our own bodies regardless of the imperfections. And that wraps up tonight's edition of This Week with Thai PBS World. Catch this program every Fridays at 11 p.m. only on Thai PBS. And don't forget to follow us on social media as well as our website, thaipbsworld.com, for all the latest updates and analyses. And we'll be leaving you tonight with beautiful images of Simulan Islands as it reopens to foreign tourists once again. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next Friday. Swadika.